We're live. Hi guys, welcome to GDG Joburg. Um, it's our first event for the year. We've been dragging our feet, but we're happy to be back. Uh, so today we have an amazing guest. Today we have Ashita who's going to walk us through uh, building high performance apps by using dev tools, which makes me particularly proud because I'm a web dev myself. So it's good to have a web dev hailing all the way from India. So uh, without further ado, I'll leave it to you, Ashita. You, the floor is yours. So um, hello, everyone. Uh, I am Ashita. And uh, today I will be speaking about uh, how you can build uh, high performance apps using, uh, you know, uh, Dart DevTools. So uh, uh, before that, um, in case you have any doubts, uh, please feel uh, free uh, to, uh, you know, join this Discord channel. So um, I will just quickly put the link. So in case you have any doubts regarding Dart and Flutter, we have a lot of experts uh, here. So um, they'll be more than happy to answer your doubts. So you can go ahead and join this Discord channel. So now let's quickly uh, get into the talk. So uh, today we'll be talking about how we can build high performance apps and using uh, Dart DevTools. So before that, let me give you a brief introduction about myself. Um, my name is Ashita Prasad and um, I'm from India and I have been working in Flutter for the past two to three years. Um, I uh, did my undergrad from IIT Kanpur and I have also done my MBA from IIM Ahmedabad. And I'm also the founder of uh, uh, Flutter Gems. So um, what is Flutter Gems? Flutter Gems is, uh, uh, just, just give me a second. Uh, there is some issue. Yes, so Flutter Gems is basically a visual platform uh, where Dart and Flutter packages have been neatly categorized. Currently, we have more than 5,000 plus packages which are neatly categorized into various categories. There are a lot of popular categories here, like you can see. You have, say, geolocation and maps. You have ad serving. Something like a social media chat communication category has a lot of subcategories like chat, SMS, real-time communication, etc. So uh, you can head to uh, fluttergems.dev uh, uh, to, you know, just explore it. So uh, I just wanted to check, guys, can you see my screen? No, we can't, eh? I think maybe turn okay. off the video, then share your screen. Okay. Uh, let me just uh, try it once more. I... Can you see the screen now? Yes, we can. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, so just like I was saying, this is the Flutter Gems website. And it is a visual discovery platform for Dart and Flutter packages. And we have a lot of, uh, currently we have 5,000 packages that have been neatly categorized into various categories. And you can head to fluttergems.dev uh, to explore the platform. So, you know, when we talk about Flutter, Flutter is relatively young. You know, it's just uh, like the first alpha release was in 2017. But it has simply exploded in terms of popularity. A lot of apps are now being made in Flutter. You have apps like Google Pay, which is uh, a really popular payment app, which has been completely built on Flutter. You have apps like Edpunk, which is, you know, mobiles, uh, which is a first mobile first learning platform for Bharat. It's an edtech app. You have apps like Dream 11, which is a fantasy sports platform, and it boasts of more than 100 million users every day. So you can just understand the scale of Flutter. You have, you know, Kite by Zerudha. This is an investment management uh, app. And again, it's a really popular app in India. So, you know, when you see these apps, you wonder what is, you know, the DNA of a successful app. 
that's the first question that comes to our mind how can we actually build these successful ads and what is the dna of these successful ads so the key criteria the key things that make an app successful is a great user experience you know uh, your app should work seamlessly regardless of the device whether you are using an android device or say uh, various uh, different android devices or whether you are using an ios device your app should work seamlessly your app should not slow down or crash and your app should uh, give high performance and what does that mean it means that it should be optimized for speed it should use minimum resources it should have a low network data usage etc okay so how can we make sure that we are able to build uh, you know uh, a successful app that has all these things so well uh, dart has this awesome uh, suite of uh, tools called dev tools that will come to our rescue here um, again i've written um, a very detailed medium articles on each of these dev tools and you can see the link here here i will also share the link uh, at the end of the session so you can go ahead and check it out so uh, now what is dev tools you know dev tools is a suite of pre packaged application performance monitoring and debugging tools and it is available for dart and flutter so we have a lot of tools in the dev tools suite and it includes you know flutter inspector that helps you with your ui issues you have an app size tool that will help you figure out if there are any issues with the size of your app you have a network view tool that helps you you know figure out if there is any latency issue when you are raising an api call or when you are interacting with the network are there any issues there you have a logging view you have a cpu profiler view which helps you see you know what sort of resources are is your cpu using how compute intensive your app is you have things like the memory view performance view and debugger so all these dev tools are currently available for flutter mobile and desktop um for flutter web we have flutter inspector debugger and logging view and all the other tools that is performance view cpu profiler memory view network view and app size tool if you want to use them for flutter web you will have to use chrome dev tools so now let us see how we can launch uh, dev tools in vs code so i am sure a lot of you have installed uh, flutter extension from vs code marketplace if you haven't you will have to install the flutter extension from vs code marketplace and you'll have to create a new flutter project okay so using the uh, command palette we can just go ahead and create a new flutter project we'll create an application and the flutter project gets created after this we'll have to select our target platform it can be our android ios web windows linux or macos so you can see at the bottom you have macos darwin using uh, this we actually uh can change so right now um i was doing it on a macos desktop which is why a uh, macos desktop has been chosen to run the app you will have to hit on the run uh, button you can see here on clicking it the app will get executed so uh, there are two ways to launch dev tools one is that vs code is going to prompt you like you can see here and the second is that you will have to a uh, click on dart dev tools uh, in the status bar so you do this when uh, your vs code is not prompting you to open dart dev tools so in that case just go to the status bar and click on dart dev tools and you can launch your uh, dev tools so when you click on uh, dart dev tools you will get this option uh, as to which dev tools you want to open again you can open all your dev tools either in visual studio code itself or you can open them separately in a web browser so this is how it it looks when you open it directly into visual St uh, studio code so you can see here we have opened the widget inspector tool and in case you want to open it in a stand alone browser uh, this is how the interface of flutter dev tools looks like okay 
Uh, so uh, whenever you're going to run your dev tools for the first time, you will get an error. Okay. And we will discuss about this error in the subsequent slides. So uh, this is how you can actually simply open it in your web browser. And you can see for all the tools, we have uh, different tabs. We have a performance uh, tab, we have a CPU profiler tab, a memory tab, a network tab, a logging tab, and an app size tab. So uh, now, without any further ado, let's uh, get into uh, these dev tools one by one. We'll start with CPU profiler. So uh, why are we using CPU profiler? Too? So there's a study that indicates that more than 80% of people uh, in the United States simply delete or uninstall an app because of performance issues. You know, out of which 38% of these users switch to another app, which works better. And 34% of these people will simply abandon their task. This means that you're not going to get a second chance. And an app's CPU usage has a direct impact on its performance. You're optimized. If your code is well optimized, it's going to consume lesser CPU resources, which will provide a faster UI, and hence leading to a really better user experience. It will help to conserve battery and it will not lead to any device heat up issues. So how can we actually monitor this? So there is this performance engineering method called profiling, which is used for analyzing the CPU resources consumed by a code. So CPU profiler view provides insights into the CPU usage of an app. So to see a CPU profiler in action, we will be using an example which involves the Mandelbrot set visualization. And this is a problem which is compute intensive in nature. So uh, for the source code, um, uh, again, all the links are there in my uh, in all my Medium articles. So I will quickly share the link now. So for all the respective uh, uh, dev tools, uh, all the source code are there in the respective articles. So you can check that out. So uh, once you go and uh, you know uh, clone and fork the project, uh, you can open it in VS Code. This is how it looks. Uh, make sure that you click on the Get Packages button that you see. Uh, this will ensure that all your dependencies have been installed. And um, to you know to run CPU Profiler View, you have to run your app on an actual device. Now the question is, why should you do that? Why should you run the you know run the app on an actual device and not on an emulator? Now the reason for this is when uh, you know your emulators and your simulators they don't use the same hardware as your actual device, so their performance characteristics are different. You know, like some operations on simulators will be a lot faster than our, uh, than on a real device. And some operations may be a lot slower on the simulator than on an actual device. So if you run it on a simulator, you are work, you might be working on the wrong issues. You know, you might think that this operation is slower, but in real life, it is actually faster. And the problems that you think are not occurring now, but when you go to the real life and you, you know, re release your build, you will have issues. So which is why it is always recommended that all the, your performance related dev tools you should run it on an actual device and not on a simulator. So um, in case you have a desktop app, uh, you should select uh, you know your desktop uh, development uh, device as your target platform. And then you can run, compile your app and run it uh, in the profile mode on the desktop itself. So now um, you, know, you can see two options here, debug mode and profile mode. And it is said that we should run our app in the profile mode. So why are we now choosing to run our app in the profile mode and not in the debug mode? Now, the reason being that debug modes, you know, they have those additional checks such as assertions, et cetera, which will not run in a release build and also will not run in a profile build. 
and these checks that a debug mode executes are often expensive. Also, debug mode executes code in a much different way than a release mode. So in a debug mode, we use the just-in-time approach where your Dart code is compiled just in time as the app runs. But in profile mode or our and the release mode, our code is pre-compiled to native instructions, which is the ahead of time compilation. So what happens is in debug mode, JIT will often cause the app to pause, you know, for JIT compilation, which itself will show up as giant. And when we do it in profile mode uh, and the application is compiled and launched, it is almost identical to the release build. So hence, we should always, whenever we are running performance-based tools, it is important that we run our code in profile mode and not in debug mode. So um, now let's go ahead and open our Dart DevTools. We are doing it through the status bar and we will open it in a standalone browser. So you can see uh, this will be the, this is the CPU profiler tab and you have to click on it. And this is how the CPU profiler view looks like. You can see there are three important buttons in CPU profiler view. We have the record button, we have the stop button and we have the clear button. So uh, when you click on record, it is going to start storing all the CPU data. You know, all the CPU profiling data that we are recording, it will simply start storing them. When we click on stop, it will stop, uh, you know, any CPU profiling data, any CPU profiling, and it will stop storing the data. And when you click on erase, it will erase all the CPU usage data that has been stored till now. So there are additional options like profile startup, uh, profile app startup option. Now what this does is it will load all the CPU samples that have occurred before the first flutter frame was drawn. And it helps in identifying functions that are causing delay in app startup. In other words, it helps us identify the culprit function. Then we have this uh, option called load all CPU samples. Load all CPU samples option will simply load the data pertaining to your main isolate as well as all the spawned isolates. Now, again, we in the future, subsequent slides, we will see uh, how we can spawn isolates and what is the main isolate in Flutter. And the third option is the profile granularity option, which by default is set to medium. When it is set to medium, what it means is that um, every 250 microseconds, uh, one CPU sample will be recorded. You can set it to low granularity, which means one sample will be recorded every thousand microseconds, or you can set it to a high granularity, which means that one sample will be recorded every 50 microseconds. Uh, to you know, export all the collected CPU samples data, you can use this export option, which is there on the far right corner. So uh, to understand, you know, CPU profiler view better, we will undertake two scenarios. The first scenario is where we will run the entire code on the main isolate. That is serial computation. We'll be doing serial computation here. Then we'll use our CPU profiler tool and we'll collect all the CPU samples and we'll analyze them. And we'll try to identify the root cause, you know, the issue the root cause issue of app of performance using the CPU profiler tool. In the second scenario, what we will do, the problem that we have identified in scenario one, we will try to resolve it using parallel processing. And we will see what impact it has on our, you know, app performance. And then we'll again visualize the CPU usage data. So let's get started. So again, uh, we'll be running our app in profile mode. And to record the CPU usage data, we will simply use the record button. So we are clicking on the record button and it is going to record all our CPU samples. So you can see that.
so now when we click on launch explorer button in the home uh, on the apps home screen you can see you will see that our you know mandelbrot set will get computed so you can see the mandelbrot set so here we are not rendering any isolate because we are running the entire code on the main isolate itself so the moment we click on launch explorer we will see that our mandelbrot set has appeared so now what we will do is we will click on the zoom button three times so you can see this is the first click this is the second click and this is the third click so you can see that there is a significant lag which means that it is you know hampering our user experience so we don't want this to happen so now i uh, will simply stop recording the data and we'll do that using the stop button so this is what we get so now our observation was that so this is the cpu usage that we got again we can see three important buttons here uh three important tabs here one is the bottom up tab one is the call tree tab and what is one is the cpu flame chart so we uh, did observe that our code was lagging significantly okay so now let us start analyzing each of these tabs one by one so we start with the bottom up tab so what bottom up tab does is that you can see here all our you know uh, methods and functions are arranged in descending order of their execution time okay and what bottom up is doing is that it is showing the list of the functions and methods and it is also showing their source location uh, you know that are called last in the call stack for any given cpu sample as i discussed they are arranged in descending order of execution time and you can see that mandelbrot dot iterations method is taking the most amount of time and time here is displayed both in percentage terms and absolute terms so for example mandelbrot iterations is the longest running function and so it is at the top of the table it is taking 357 milliseconds which is around 75% of the total run time so uh, why they have they given the percentage uh, you know column is because percentage helps us in quickly identifying the culprit function so right now we know that mandelbrot dot iterations is the issue now let us move to the second um, tab which is the call tree tab what call tree tab does is that it opens a top down representation of the entire call stack and because of this it is an exact opposite of the bottom up approach to expand the method you can simply click on it and it will show all the methods that it is calling and it will help you determine which package or method is responsible for the most cpu usage and this is the cpu flame chart cpu flame chart visualizes the timeline of the cpu usage using a uh you know top down stack trace and here in this uh uh tab width of each method call is equal to run time which means more the width more the usage and you can see that we have two different colors here you know one is lavender blue and one is a pale orange so why is that now this is because all our core dart and flutter libraries are colored in lavender blue and all our user defined methods or third party packages that we are using have been defined in pale orange now this differential coloring is actually helping us to quickly identify the part of the code you know where performance bot bottleneck might be occurring so that we can make requisite performance improvements
So again, let us try to identify the most intensive CPU method. So as you can see, the bottom up chart is quickly telling us that iterations method is the most CPU intensive method and it is consuming 75% of the total CPU usage. So now let us quickly go ahead and see the code. So this is the iterations function. You can uh, now let me take a step back and try to explain how Mandelbrot set is calculated. You know, to compute the Mandelbrot set for every point, we'll have to compute an iteration in the complex plane until it exceeds a particular threshold value. So this iteration has to be done. This computation has to be done for every point in the plane which makes it intensive. So this is uh, the render data function, which is then actually calling this iteration function for each and every pixel. So you can see that the CPU usage of iteration function is high because it is being called by render data function for each and every pixel on the app screen. So now let us see how we can improve performance. Now there are two ways you can do that. One is to reduce the time complexity of your code. And second is parallel processing. So in our case, right now, there is no scope of reducing the time complexity. So what we'll do is we'll be doing parallel computation where we will divide our complex plane into four parts and we will simultaneously perform our iterations on those four parts. Now the question is, how can you do it in Flutter? To do it in Flutter, we will be spawning isolates. So what happens in a Flutter app is normally all the Dart code runs in a single isolate, which is called the main. And it has a single thread of execution, which means that all your events will run in a single thread. But in case we have some heavy computational load, like you can see in this case, we can create more isolates that can help us with parallel code execution on multi-core processors. Now, uh, what the, this does is that it greatly improves our app performance as now we can fully utilize the capability of the device CPU. So uh, this is how we actually, you know, create uh, more isolates. So as you can remember, as you remember in scenario one, our number of rendering isolates was set to zero. Here we will be setting it to four. Now we will click on the record button to uh, simply start recording our CPU samples. We launch the Explorer and we clicked on zoom button thrice. But did you notice how significantly quicker it was compared to scenario one? Now let us quickly validate our observations. So this is what our bottom up chart has given. But hey, we cannot actually find our iterations function here. Now, why is that? So let us dig deeper. So the reason for that is if you look at the bottom part of your uh, screen, you will see that main isolate has been selected which means that right now we were looking at the CPU profile data of the main isolate. But all our computations have been done on the spawned isolates. So for that, we will have to, you know, change it and select another isolate. So this option is called isolate selector. And using this, uh, we can change our isolate and then we'll get the data. So as you can see, when I click on the isolate selector, I see all the other four isolates, which is two, three, four, and five. So now let us select isolate two and view the data. So this is how the data for isolate two looks like. Okay, you can see that we have uh, the data Mandelbrot iterations is now taking 137 milliseconds, which is around 78% of the total time for this isolate. 
and uh, we could view all this uh, isolate data because we clicked on load all cpu samples so if you don't go to load all cpu samples you will not be able to see the data of your spawned isolates so now uh, let us do a performance uh, analysis so we ran two scenarios the first one was a serial execution where we were running our entire code on the main isolate and the runtime for mandelbrot iterations there was around 357 milliseconds and the second one uh, the second scenario that we did was a parallel execution where we spawned four other isolates and here you can see that the runtime for mandelbrot iterations in the first isolate was 88 milliseconds in the second isolate was 98 milliseconds in the third isolate was 111 milliseconds and in the fourth isolate was 137 milliseconds so because we ran it in a parallel uh, fashion the total time taken was 137 milliseconds so we quickly got a performance improvement of 2.5x by simply using other isolates so now let's move to the second dev tool which is performance view so again like we discussed a uh, study indicates that more than 80% of people simply delete or uninstall their app because of performance issues and users tend to love fast and smooth uis and they hate janking ui now these janks you know they can occur in a variety of ways you can have slow loading times you can have stuttering animations you can have you know other types of performance issues that makes you feel that the app is becoming unresponsive and difficult to use so we will see how we'll be how we can use dev tools performance view to help us detect whether you know frames are janking while using an app so again you can head to the a uh, link that i've shared bitly master dev tools to uh, for the source code uh, go to the requisite article and you will get the link for the source code we will again open the project in vs code and run get and click on get packages to ensure all our dependencies have been installed and again uh, because performance view is a performance based uh, you know dev tool we will be selecting the actual device here i selected a lenovo k8 plus and we will run the code in profile mode so you can see it's running the code in profile mode this is how it will look if you open it in vs and now we are opening it in a standalone browser so this is the performance page so like i was saying when you run your performance view for the first time you will get this error so what is this error this error states that shader compiler jank detected now this is because uh, this is currently being addressed in your latest rendering runtime for flutter impeller and this should get resolved in the future soon so for now we'll just ignore it and move ahead this is not going to impact your results so just move ahead and ignore this error so now let's discuss the performance view tool we, uh, we have four parts in performance view tool the first is the toolbar and it uh, provides us the option to pause profiling resume profiling and stop profiling we also have an option to add a performance overlay directly on the app so let us go ahead and press it so you can see when we click on performance overlay it will directly add it on the app and what that does is you can see on your app you can see these two charts when you enable performance overlay and what it does is that it displays the frame statistics for the last 300 frames okay 
and, and aggregates are displayed and they are directly displayed on the app. The upper graph, the upper chart that you see, that is for the raster thread and the lower chart is for the UI thread. Now raster thread is for scene rendering and you can sort of compare it to the GPU and your UI thread is for core dart execution. You can see vertical green lines uh, on the chart and these vertical green lines represent the current frame. The second uh, part of a performance view tool is the flutter frames chart and this chart you know, presents the application's frame information and you can see each set of colored bar here that you see is representing a single flutter frame. Now in an ideal scenario your frame should be created and displayed within 16 milliseconds which is 1 by 60th of a second. Only then a user will not feel any janking. If it takes more than 16 milliseconds, the human eye will perceive a janking. And if it is, so we should avoid scenarios where our, you know, uh, frame is taking more than 16 milliseconds to display. The second, the third part is the timelines events chart. And what it does is that it's going to provide a deeper analysis of each flame of each frame in the flutter frame chart. So what it does is that for every bar you're going to select in the flutter frame chart, your corresponding timeline details will get highlighted in this timeline event chart. So you can see, this is how the timeline event chart looks like. And it shows all the events that went into building that particular flutter frame. Now those events will include both your UI thread and the raster thread as well. Now this is the fourth part. This is our CPU profiler. And here for every event that you select in the timeline events chart, you will find its entire CPU profiling information. And this is the same CPU profiler that we discussed earlier. It has the bottom-up, call tree, and your CPU flame chart tabs as well. So you can see all the three tabs, just like we discussed. The CPU profiler section of performance view has all of them. Now, to understand it better, we will again do a case study. We will take two scenarios. One, where we will rapidly scroll down a screen and check whether there is any jank detected using our performance view tool. And then we will go ahead and try to fix this jank issue and see if it worked in scenario two. So this is the scenario one. So as you can observe here, the user experience is not that good because of janking. And also if you closely look at the raster plot, you see there's a red bar, which means that instructions are taking more than 16 milliseconds to run. And we can also see that for now our UI thread is fine. Now let us go ahead and see what happens in the flutter frame chart. This is what the flutter frame chart is displaying and you can see that in almost every frame that is being rendered, there is a jank. So now let us go back and uh, check out the code to understand the cause of this uh, poor performance. So you can see that we have nested um, list view here. And within the nested list view, we have this property called the shrink wrap property, which is set as true. 
Now, what this shrink wrap property is doing is that it is forcing the evaluation of the height of the inner list view widget by building all the widgets in that list view, even if the widgets are outside the screen. And this can have a significant impact on our app performance. So to resolve this, we will simply use the sliver list view widget. What this does is that this will build, uh, you know, build all our widgets dynamically whenever the user scrolls. So now let us check if it works. So this is our second scenario. So now you can see that there is no janking. Our raster thread is also now almost green. And we can see that the app performance has improved significantly. And again, our UI thread remains fine. So let us see in the Flutter frames chart. You can again see that the number of red bars have reduced significantly, which means that there is no janking now. Which means our solution worked. So now let's move to the next tool, which is the memory view tool. So uh, RAM right now, which is, you know, um, devices RAM is right now the most sought after digital real estate. And every developer wants to use it as less as possible, you know, no developer wants to use more RAM. So, and why is that? The reason being that your user, if your app uses too much memory, user experience will get compromised while using the app. And most of the devices will then start sending warnings to the user saying that this app is using a lot of memory and your app might even crash and or not respond. And it's also important to understand that devices memory is a shared resource and it is shared by applications, kernels and other um, and other OS processes that are also running on the device. So if your app is uh, taking or uh, is using a lot of memory, it's going to also impact the performance of other apps on the same device. So a lot of you might be knowing about, you know, Dart inbuilt garbage collector. And you will be like, why should we, you know, care about memory usage when Dart has an inbuilt garbage collector, which is going to, you know, clear all the garbage, all the memory uh, issues at regular intervals, right? Well, not exactly. So you can see in this above diagram, uh, it is showing various types of objects that are present in the heap. You have the green circle which shows the objects in the heap whose references still are present in the stack. You have the red circle, which shows the objects in the heap that are currently not being used. And you might expect Dart's garbage collector to remove all of these unused objects, but that's not the case. Because garbage collector only removes objects whose references no longer exist in the stack. You know, and that is represented by the non-intersection, uh, intersecting part of the red circle. And there may still be some unused objects in the heap, you know, that have references in the stack. And those unused uh, objects are referred by those, by the intersecting part of the heap. And when you are not able to remove these objects from the memory, it's called memory leak. As these objects, still occupy memory even if they are not being used by the app. And memory leaks are bad for your application because they lead to poor app performance causing frame drops and lagging and it will lead your app to crash and will often give an error called uh, which is you know out of memory error and your application will stop responding. And it is also critical to ensure 
uh, you know, efficient memory usage by detecting and removing any such memory leaks that might be present. So here DevTools memory view will come to our rescue. It will help us analyze the heap snapshot of a Flutter app that can be used to identify and plug any such memory leaks. So again, the source code, you can find it on my Medium article, the link I had shared. We will open the project in VS Code. Make sure you click on Get Packages uh, button to ensure all your dependencies are there. Again, Memory View is a performance-based uh, dev tool. So we will be selecting an actual device. Here, I have selected my macOS desktop. We'll be running the code in profile mode. And uh, we'll be launching DevTools. So I'll be opening DevTools in web browser. And this is how the memory tab looks like. And this is how the entire memory view looks like. As shown again, you can see there are three important buttons. You have pause, you have resume, and you have clear. Uh, pause will let you pause memory profiling. Resume will let you resume memory profiling. And clear will let you clear all your memory usage data. The second important part is the memory overview chart. And by default, memory view will constantly collect all the memory usage data, as you can see. Again, the length of the uh, timeline you can change uh, by clicking on the display default option. Uh, you have all these options that you can choose. But right now, we are using the default for our current use case. So what we will do here is we will take an initial heap snapshot of the app by uh, clicking on the uh, take heap snapshot button as you can see so you can see our memory overview chart is now populated and you can see a green circle on the timeline now what this green circle indicates is that we took a manual snapshot So this is how our memory overview chart looks like. Okay, at a particular instant, we can see all the values. So now let us try to understand what these terms means. So the first term is RSS or resident set size. And this represents the portion of a program's memory that is currently loaded into RAM and it is available for immediate use. You can actually consider it as a working set of a program you know, because it represents the memory that is actively being used to execute any program's instructions. And it will include all your stack and heap memory along with memory from your shared loaded libraries. The second is the allocated program memory. Allocated memory refers to the portion of the computer's memory that has been reserved for use by a specific program and it is not available for other programs. It is important to manage allocated memory carefully while running your code because if you run uh, out of allocated memory, it will cause your program to crash or otherwise malfunction. Dart Flutter uh, just indicates the memory which is occupied by Dart and Flutter objects in the heap and here it is around 8.23 MB. Dart and Flutter native again um, represents the memory that has been occupied by the native objects, which is exposed uh, to the Dart VM by native OS. This is very less, it's 3.4 KB. Raster layer is your size of engines, Flutter engines raster cache layer, and raster picture is the size of Flutter engines raster cache picture. Again, these are zero bytes. So now, what we will do to simulate a memory leak, we will create 1 million instances of memory leak object on each button press and we will add them to the list leaky objects as you can see on the screen here. 
So let us go ahead and do that. We'll simply click add one million leaky objects. And the moment we clicked it, you can see that our usage in the memory view chart increased significantly. You can see that bump the moment we click it. And you can observe that your uh, simply by clicking on the add 1 million leaky objects, your memory usage increased. You can see the numbers have also changed. The numbers have also increased. So to take a snapshot of the current heap, we will have to click on take heap snapshot. And the count of the number of objects in the heap, you can see, has now become 1 million. As you can see in the count column here. And uh, you can see that we have exactly added 1 million instance of memory leak object, which occupy 15.3 megabytes of memory. Now, by clicking on the tree map switch, you can actually view the memory footprint of all objects. So you can see here we have our new memory leak object, which is taking 15.3 MB. And this actually helps us in detecting the objects that are occupying more memory. And it also shows the location of these objects in the source files so that we can go ahead and fix it. So here, like using this tool, you can see how we were able to detect unused objects in the memory heap that were the cause of the memory leak. And if we keep continue, you know, if we keep clicking on this button, add 1 million leaky objects, the heap size will actually keep on increasing until the total allocated memory required is more than the available device memory and our app will crash. So there are a lot of other dev tools as well, like Flutter Inspector, App Size Tool, Network View and Logging View. And in case you want to know more about them, uh, you can actually go ahead and read the Medium articles. I have shared detailed Medium articles with uh, stepwise uh, images as well. So in case you have any questions, uh, you can ask me. You can join the Discord channel as well. OK, thank you, Ashita. What a, what a hectic talk. I mean, it was highly technical. I feel like I'd have to watch this video again on YouTube once we upload it to understand some of the concepts. But uh, guys, those of you joining us, please, uh, you can post some of your questions in the chat and then uh, we'll have Khoi Tsimang and Lesejo read them for us. Let me quickly see. Oh, I see you also posted the source code as well. Yes, so all the, um, you know, all the descriptions, all the source code and all the explanations are there in those uh, Medium articles. Fantastic, fantastic. Okay, so, I, I, okay, the only question is from, is it uh, Gian or Gian? I hope I'm saying that correctly. So, oh no, yes, we, you will get the recording. So that will be up uh, within a week. So we'll have that. Okay, so we have a question from Jessica. So I wanted to ask if the dev tools can be used in Android Studio when you create a Flutter project. Yes, you can use them in Android Studio as well. So again, um, if you go to my original article, I have showed two ways of doing it. So you can do that. Okay, in the so initial article, I've showed that you can do it on Android Studio as well as on VS Code. Uh, for the future articles, I have chosen VS Code, but in case you want to know how to, you know, install uh, it on Android Studio and everything, you can go and uh, check out that article. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. And we have uh, Gian again asking, how can we get better at using dev tools? So see, um, whenever um, I will suggest that whenever you you may build an app. Uh, try to run all these tests. So start from whenever you are using UI, say whenever you are designing your UI in Flutter, use Flutter Inspector. It's really handy tool and it will make you uh, help you build your app really faster. And all these performance tools before releasing your build, make sure you run across them. And the way to get better is to keep practicing. 
and you can read or uh, more i have explained uh, these scenarios um, again in the medium article as well and you have to keep practicing the more you practice the more you will understand you know each and every tab all the uh, values that you can see and how you can edit how you can actually improve it's you will have to practice yeah to that's true. practice 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 <laughs> Okay, uh, do you have any more questions, guys? Oh, okay, there we are. So, any interesting research paper you can recommend in this topic? Uh, so, I am not aware of any research paper. So, the way I did this was uh, I uh, uh, went through DART's basic documentation, but I felt that, uh, you know, a lot of steps on how to use the tool uh, were not explained. So, I started picking up scenarios. Uh, from GitHub, I started like, for example, in memory uh, view that you saw that add 1 million leaky objects was uh, just a very crude way of trying um, a memory view. So I started building those scenarios and uh, uh, just to understand, you know, DevTools better. And uh, that is what I've written in the Medium article, uh, but I'm not aware of any interesting research paper. Okay, I hope that uh, answers Tepo's question. But uh, I think uh, he, he'll have to research. And uh, yeah, I, th I think he'll find the research in the research. Hopefully. Uh, what? I'm sorry, I missed it. Okay, and we, we have another we have another question. Is this uh, Goku Das? Oh, almost like Goku. Can I just call you Goku? <laughs> so Goku wants to know that does that have any option to manually dispose objects from memory rather than to assign null? Um, I don't condition. think so. Dart has a manual option. You'll have to dig deeper in the, into the documentation to figure that out. Uh, as for my use case, I'm not aware. I know that Dart the garbage collector automatically will delete at a certain point of time, but Usually memory leaks and other issues, they are not able to delete. Like okay. from the uh, garbage, uh, from the, your memory heap. Okay, I see. I hope that answers Goku's question. Okay. Are there any more questions, guys? Well, you know, when the room goes silent, that usually is a no. <laughs> okay, uh, it's actually compliments. People are really happy with your talk. So Jess is saying really amazing talk. No, I think I agree with Jess. <laughs> it's been a very informative one, eh? Yeah, and we have Goku saying it's time to dig deeper. So one thing I've seen is that you've really grown people's interest in this, eh? they might even start doing their own research now, going deeper and deeper into Flutter and DevTools, which is a good thing. I think that is proper. Anytime people learn to a point where they even want to do their research, then that means they gained a lot from this talk. Okay, guys, so there are no more questions. Um, okay. Oh, wait, we have one more. So... Temple asks, where can I find a reference to the article you did earlier? So I shared the link. I'll share it again. Okay. Uh, I think, uh, Temple, if you just check in the comment section just above you, there, there's a link there. So yes, it says see. Bitly Master Dev Tools. So I'll yep. share the link again. This is the link. Fantastic. There you go, Temple. Awesome, awesome. Okay, that is fantastic. Um, Ashita, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for this amazing talk. I, I clearly you've opened a lot of people's eyes. Uh, so what we will do is that we will have this up in no time and then we will let you know. I also like to thank all of our guests for